sounds like a very complicated farting technique, right? Radix fart. What is a radix? Well, don't be scared. It is an unconventional but a really simple way to fart a list. Another handy trick that you can have up your sleeve while tackling programming problems. Hello friends, welcome back to Study Algorithms, a place where I simplify programming for you with animations, visuals and some really easy to understand examples. Today, I want to talk about the Radix fault algorithm. First, I will tell you the basic idea behind Radix fault. Then, we will see how does a Radix fault work and what happens behind the scenes. Going forward, we will do a dry run of the code so that this concept stays in your mind forever. So, without further ado, let's get started. You may already know about the traditional sorting techniques like the insertion sort and the very famous quick sort. But none of these techniques help you to achieve a linear time complexity. Just like the bucket sort and the counting sort, radix sort can help you to improve this time and achieve a order of n time complexity. But in radix sort also, you have some limitations upon the input set. In radix sort, all the elements in the input list should have the same number of digits. The basic idea is to first sort all the elements according to their units place, then according to the tens place, and then subsequently towards the most significant place. How does all of this look? Let us take an example. Let us try to sort this array using the radix sort algorithm. If you remember, I told you that in radix sort, all of the elements should have the same number of digits, right? But if you see this array, you can see that some elements have three digits, some elements have two digits, and some elements have only one digit. So, can you not apply the radix sort algorithm on this? Well, you can. What you can do is, when you have the number 23, you can assume that it has an imaginary zero written behind it. So, 23 is again now made up of three digits. Similarly, when you have the number 1, you can assume that there are two imaginary zeros behind it. So, this way, I can have all of the elements having same number of digits. So, in step 1, what we have just done is, we have converted all of these elements to same number of digits. So, you can see, 23 has been converted to 023, 1 has been converted to 001, and 45 has been converted to 045. So, how do you apply radix sort on it? What does radix mean? Radix simply means the base of a system. So, what we do in radix sort is, we first sort all of the numbers using the units place, then according to the tens place, and then according to the hundreds place. How does that look? You start off from the beginning. Always remember that you will move the elements in the order you read them. So, let me just try to sort all of these numbers based upon only on their units place. So, we will be only looking at 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 5 and 8. So, starting from the beginning, I see the number 1. I take up this and move my element to the first position. Going forward, I scan the array once again. I see 1 over here. So, I move this element to position number 2. Next. I will again start from the top and see the number 2. I find 2 and I copy it over here. Then I move number 3, then 4, then 5 and then finally 8. So you see, we have sorted all of these numbers according to the digit in their units place. Going forward, what we will do is, we will sort all of these numbers according to the digit in their tens place. So once again, you start from the beginning. You see the number 0. So let us take up this number and move it to the first position. Then I can't find any 1. I can find the number 2. But you are starting from the beginning. So take up this and move the number over here. You see 2 again. So move 0, 2, 3 over here. Then you find 3. So you move 4, 3, 2. And then similarly, So you see, we sorted all of these numbers using the digit in the tens place. Now, as a final step, we will sort all of these numbers using the digits in the hundreds place. Once again, always start from the beginning. So you find the number 0. 
would simply take this up and move it to the first position. Next, starting from the top, search for the second zero. You find it over here. So take this and move it to the second position. Similarly, so as you can see, ultimately in the last step, we have all of these elements sorted in an ascending order. And this is how a radix sort algorithm works. Quite simple, right? Similarly, if you had one more element in the array that had, say, let's say, four digits, you would just have to create one more step five where you would be again moving all of these elements using the digit in the thousands case. Now, if this concept is clear to you, let us do a dry run of the code. You might wonder how would you perform a radix sort if you have some negative numbers in the array? So let us take up an example of an array that has some negative numbers. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement radix sort. Now, here is a trick that we apply. In our first condition, we check if your array has any negative numbers. If you find any negative number, what you can do is you can find the minimum number that you found in the array. And then what you can do is you can add this minimum number to each of the element in the array. So once this piece of code executes, what would happen is you find out the minimum number in the array is minus nine, right? What you do is you simply add nine to all of these elements. What would this change your array to? So you see when I added nine to each of the elements, my array changed back to all positive numbers. Now you can simply perform radix sort on this, right? So let me just copy down all of these values in my first step. In the next step, we find out what is the maximum element that we have because the maximum element will determine the maximum number of digits that we have, right? So if your maximum element has four digits, that means you need to sort all of these numbers four times, right? The units place, tens place, hundreds place, and the thousands place. So you find out the maximum number. In this case, the maximum number comes out to be 809. Going forward, we use the counting sort algorithm to sort all of these numbers first according to the units place, then according to the tens place, and then according to the hundredth place. Once this loop ends, what happens is this array would transform into. So we got a sorted array. But you see the elements of this array are differing from the original input array. That is because we added the minimum number, right? So as a last step, what we do is we again subtract back the minimum number from all of these elements. Once you do that, all of these elements would become So you see, ultimately, we got all the original elements that needed to be sorted. Notice that we are using counting sort to sort the numbers at each of the positions. That is because counting sort is a stable sort and it will maintain the order in which these elements are encountered in the array. I am including a link to the counting sort algorithm in case you want to check it out. The time complexity of this algorithm is order of n multiplied by k, where k is the maximum number of digits you have in any element, because that is the number of times you have to sort all of these numbers, right? I hope I was able to simplify the radix sort algorithm and it's working for you. As per my final thoughts, I know that it is an unconventional way of sorting, but it is always handy to keep a trick in your back pocket. You never know when you might encounter a test case where this kind of a sorting technique really comes in handy. What other scenarios can you think where you can apply the radix sort algorithm? Are there any limitations that you can think of? What happens when you want to sort a list of strings instead of a list of integers? How do you go about that? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. However, if you're still facing doubts, I want to let you know that a text-based explanation to all the content of this channel is available on the website studyalgorithms.com.
I'm including a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. As always, you can find the sample code, its implementation and its test cases in my GitHub profile as well. The links to which are again in the description. Once again, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya.